Well, welcome back. We're talking about the question of corporate corruption in the United States. Let's get back to our panel. And Bart, you know, you were talking a moment ago about the impact on consumers here in the United States. What about the impact internationally? I mean, there are many companies outside the United States, many individuals outside the United States that invest in companies here in the, on the stock exchange here. They're affected as well. Sure. Anybody that owns Wells Fargo stock was affected. I, I mentioned American investors. The largest investor in Citi, I think, is somebody from, from the Middle East. Uh, the, the fact that um, we are uh, an American nation of American banks is really a false premise because uh, uh, you know, this is a global market uh, uh, where we, we actually don't know who the investors are. Most investors, as we know, are so-called beneficial holders. So I own through Schwab. Wells Fargo doesn't even know I'm an investor. And Wells Fargo doesn't know that who their investors are if they are beneficial holding through a third party. Right. Yeah. Richard, let's look at some of what's being done in the United States to counter this. I mean, we have congressional hearings. Uh, we saw a bit of that in our report at the beginning of the show where we had Elizabeth Warren, a Democrat senator, mm -hmm. questioning the chief of Wells Fargo. And I'm just wondering, to what extent is this theatrics that we are seeing in Congress. I mean, is there anything that comes out of these hearings? Well, I think when you pull the curtain back, I mean, we have the sort of political pressure that we talked about before. That's certainly well exemplified by those Senate banking um, hearings. But if we look at, again, some recent changes at the Justice Department, they recently brought in a compliance council. So this is someone who rose up um, through the Department of Justice, but she also had a few chapters of her career as a compliance executive working for large multinationals. Because the compliance department in a multinational, whether it be Wells Fargo or Mylan, they're supposed to be the gatekeepers of legal, ethical, and compliant behavior. And they're supposed to have a line of sight into the business whether it be incentive strategies, business practices, they're supposed to see what's going on. And the Justice Department hired someone to look at those systems, to analyze the culture of compliance, and to see if these multinationals are really embracing a culture of compliance right. in terms of an ethical workforce. Yeah, and the reason I ask that question, is because if we look at what happened in Congress there, we had uh, the chief of Wells Fargo, as I pointed out, I mean, he, was, he lost his job, he was humiliated, right. but he still walked off a very rich man and free. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the idea that he walked off a very rich man, I, I think that's very poor consolation. I don't think any CEO, uh, I, I think any CEO would gladly give up tens of millions of dollars to not be uh, to drummed out of their company the way uh, uh, Chairman CEO Stumpf was. Um, you know, the idea that these companies are, are, are going to be somehow draw, driven to better behavior by legislation, I think, is, uh, is kind of a fool's errand. I mean, when your company's stock price drops 10 to 20 percent, uh, that's all that the senior executive team or the board or the investors need to hear uh, before they begin implementing changes. And they're in a position best to implement the changes that need to be made. A lot of laws uh, that are passed on top of that are generally just piling on. Mm -hmm. They're designed to stop bad people from doing things. And most of these scandals that we're seeing are not necessarily bad people doing things. It's good people getting trapped in, in perverse incentives right. uh, uh, doing bad things. Uh, Richard, if we look at the case of EpiPen, we talked about that earlier on. And we just, mm -hmm. let's look at the pricing here. Uh, you know, here we had a product uh, a life-saving product where the price was increased 600% as we pointed out. Uh, it was selling here in the United States for something like $600. Yet that very same product sells in the United Kingdom for around $100. I mean, how does one explain a price discrepancy like that? Well, I don't know that you can. And uh, Mylan recently paid almost $500 million in a settlement with the Department of Justice because they were overcharging the government. Um, for many of these products. So I think that's the case, again, where you look at the executive compensation structure, where apparently there was an incentive plan to double earnings over a five-year period. And if management didn't achieve 90% of that goal, there would be nothing paid. So it was a win-big, lose-big bonus plan. 
and look at the unintended consequences. And again, you had some bad behavior being hidden behind good performance, and look at what happened. Mark, we've been hearing a lot during this election campaign about uh, corporate malfeasance. We heard Donald Trump accuse Hillary Clinton of malfeasance by making these speeches to Wall Street companies behind closed doors for which he received hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, we've got the election coming up in two weeks. After that, do you think in the new, whomever becomes president, do you think that's going to change? At the end of the day, the laws really are not all that effective. And I, I, I take issue with what Bart says. I don't believe that it's because the government doesn't want to enforce these things. I think that almost borders on a, like a reverse conspiracy theory. I think it's because the problems are much more difficult than, than the laws can really address. But do we see these kind of corporate scandals in other parts of the world? I have so much trouble keeping up with uh, U.S. scandals that I, I can't actually tell you that uh, Iceland is, is worse. Iceland, by the way, jailed 76 of its bankers. It's one of the few countries to respond in what I think is the appropriate way. Um, Deutsche Bank is riven with problems. Uh, much, they've already be, begun to, in the final stages of settling the mortgage securitization, much of which took place in the United States. But their trading desk runs wild, I'm told, uh, with prop and prop trading. Uh, the company is worth extraordinarily little. I don't think Americans have a monopoly on greed. I think uh, um, it's correct that some of our incentives have gone off the rails. We are far more in love with stock options, apparently, than the Japanese or many European uh, um, firms. Highly inappropriate for banks, which should be more risk averse than, let's say, uh, uh, an entrepreneurial firm. I mean, healthcare is an entirely diff different level. In one sense, you would argue it's a public good. So, where, where we see a public facing and public good producing company um, colliding with bad incentives, I think, is where the scandals are most intense. 